Yum, yum! Hello, Łukasz Pozara from Pixel Fondue here. In part 2 of the tutorial on the linear blend skinning, we will build a very simple rigging model that will replicate what linear blend skinning does for a single vertex. So open the starting scene and let's have a quick look at it. We've got the rigged cylinder mesh and some sample motion set up. The mesh is bound to the joints using weight maps as discussed in part 1. Now we're going to create setup that transforms a locator item in the same way as linear blend scanning does with mesh vertices. We we'll choose the same vertex that was shown in part 1. First I'm going to add the locator, so hit L to add the locator and I will call it point LBS and this will be the point that will be transformed in the same way as linear blend scanning algorithm does. Let's set the item color to orange. Now we're going to change the shape, so in the properties under shape we'll choose the custom shape, uh, we'll make it into a circle that solid aligns to view and is of radius of 5 millimeters. And then we go to display tab, add the draw options, set the wireframe and uh, fill colors and change the fill color to orange. Now let's snap this locator to a position where a chosen vertex is. Turn the snapping on and just alt click on snapping options to make sure a snapping to vertices is active. Now grab the our locator item and just move it so it snaps to the to the vertex that we want it to be matched to. Okay, we can turn snapping off now. We're going to add locators that will represent the vertex as transformed by each of the joints. So hit L to add the locator again and this time we will call it point as transformed by joint 1 and we'll change the color to magenta and we'll set some shape as well and this time it will be a plane again that's solid aligned to view and let's change the size to 10 millimeters in X and Y. Now we're going to the display properties, uh, add draw options and we'll set the fill color to a magenta like color. Now we need to move this locator to where the point LBS is, so select the locator, um, go to drop action pop-up and make sure you have a match position set here and now simply drag and drop onto the point LBS locator and just release and that should just snap to the same place. Now we're going to duplicate this locator um, using Ctrl D and just change the name to be point as transformed by joint 2, change the color to blue, then go to, we we'll leave the shape the same but we go to display properties and change the fill color to more bluish one and it will all set. To apply a joint transform to each locator we'll simply dynamically parent those locators to their respective joints. Make sure you are in a setup mode and have a compensation on as well. Now grab point as transformed by joint 1 locator, then grab the joint 1 item and under modifiers choose add parent. And let's do the same for the other one. So again, um, a locator, then the joint and add parent. Now when you leave, you, you can turn the compensation off and you can leave the setup and now when you scrub through the timeline you should see now those points represent our vertex as transformed by each of the joints. And we want to have a line drawn between those two locators so we can visualize the inter linear interpolation better. For this I'm going to add one more locator to the scene and I will call it line end. Now let's go to the setup mode and drag the line end onto the point as transformed by joint 1 locator. I want the line end to be child of the point as transformed by joint 1 but to be in a position where this the other the second locator is. And for this I'm going to select the line end then the, select this other locator and just uh, do a position constraint and make sure the compensation is off this time. Now you can leave the setup, let's select this first transformed locator and we will under, just drag the properties up and here on the link we set a link to line 
and finally under the, uh, the, the shape options for this uh, we're going to for the line end sorry so we'll select the line end and under the shape options here choose custom uh, choose circle and choose radius of zero so basically this item will just not draw itself in the viewport and this way so in order to have a link between items one item needs to be a child of the other and this way we have a, a link between those two that shows us the line along which the the linear blend is going to happen the last step is to perform the linear blending and apply it to the point LBS locator let's go to the schematic view and I'm not going to set the linear interpolation up as a combination of vectors, which is what ideally should happen here. For the purpose of this tutorial, since we only have two points here, I'll do the shortcut and simply use a matrix blend node to perform the blending operation directly on item world position matrices. Okay, so let's drag each of the transformed point representations into schematic. We don't really care about the dynamic parent joints, uh, sorry, nodes. Um, so let's just move them to the side and then we care about the word position channel. So we need the word position from each of these locators. And now let's add the matrix blend node into the mix. And we'll pl plug this one as matrix A input, this one as matrix B input. Now we need to set up the blend amount properly. The blend amount needs to reflect the actual weights that are on the vertex that we're trying to match to. So grab the joint, uh, the weight map should be highlighted. Now uh, grab the vertex and under weighting choose the adjust weights tool and make sure in the tool properties the show weight is on. So if it's on you will see the, you will see the, the weight value and you can see that this is 50% uh, for this vertex for that joint. And we can just confirm the other one should be 50% uh, as well. So I'll just grab it and do adjust weights again. And you can see that this is 50 as well. The blend amount tells how much of the matrix B should be blended with matrix A. So at 0%, only matrix A is used. At 100%, just matrix B is used. And if if it's 40%, then it's 40% uh, of uh, matrix B and 60 of, of matrix A and so on. In our case, blend needs to be set to 50% and it's always best to edit such values while in setup mode. So let me just set blend to 50, go out of setup. And the very last bit is to plug this transformation into the point LBS item, drag the word position channel and plug the matrix output from the matrix blend node into the point LBS word position. And now you can see as you scrub the timeline that our locator follows the vertex and the mesh perfectly. Yum yum!